in the land watered by the Yellow River, the idea of a spiritual warrior was born. One who would defend virtue with fists of iron. Over the centuries, the warrior methods have evolved and multiplied. As China moves into the 21st century, more than 400 different types of ancient Chinese weapon and open hand forms fall under the banner, Kung Fu. Kung Fu literally translates as skill learnt over time, describing the dedication needed to embrace the spirit of Chinese martial arts. small city of Dengfeng, China, home to students of the Xie Xing Hong Martial Arts School. 37 students live here year-round, ranging in age from 6 to 20. Many will not see their parents again until they are adults. All have come here in hopes of becoming the next Kung Fu legend. The small school is just one of 42 competing martial art academies clustered together in the shadow of Mount Song, China's most holy mountain and the birthplace of Chinese Buddhism. 1,500 years ago, an Indian monk named Bodhidharma traveled to a small temple built in the forest of Song Mountain. It was called Shaolin, which means young forest. For nine years, Bodhidharma meditated in a cave behind the temple. When he emerged, it is believed he brought forth Chan Buddhism, which would later be renamed Zen when it spread to Japan. He also introduced a series of strengthening exercises designed to promote internal energy, or qi, allowing the resident monks to endure prolonged Buddhist meditation. Those forms would become the root of Shaolin Kung Fu, a vehicle for spiritual transformation. In the temple's early days, those who sought sanctuary and refuge at Shaolin were retired soldiers and ruffians. They entered the Buddhist order desiring to lessen past karmic debts. With them came the many tried and tested methods of hand-to-hand -hand combat that had enabled them to survive. Within the confines of the temple, these monks developed and codified their practices into a style that would become distinctly Shaolin. The monks called it Shaolin Fist. Shaolin Kung Fu is not simply about fighting, killing, or exercise. Shaolin is an experience. It is an experiential model of Zin. You must feel it in your heart before you can fully experience it. 
For 34 generations, Shaolin masters like Sher Guosang have trained their disciples in hidden clearings around the temple. Disciples are entrusted with centuries of refinements in the art of Shaolin fighting, which grew to include 173 distinct, open-hand, weapon and animal imitating forms. Mainly, I want to teach my students to understand the soul and spirit of Shaolin Fist style. Shaolin Kung Fu has its own unique culture. It's not just a couple of moves or punches. It includes self-meditation, as well as Chinese culture and art. Strengthening both the spirit and the body allows Shaolin masters to perform a unique Kung Fu discipline known as Iron Qigong. By channeling his internal energy, or life force, called Qi, Guo Song can make his body impervious to 300 pounds of force that would otherwise crush his arms. <laughs> The warrior monk's ability to focus their chi is the power behind the movements of Shaolin Kung Fu. It is proof of one's ability to use the mind to shield the body. Another 20-year resident of the temple is 32nd generation warrior monk Sher Xing Hong, the tiger of Shaolin. When Xing Hong was 10 years old, his father brought him to Shaolin in the hopes of disciplining the young man. Xing Hong did not see his father again for nine years. The temple became his family and his kung fu prowess, his future. <laughs> At age 18, Xing Hong took the vows to become a warrior monk. And six years later, Xing Hong opened his own martial arts school, overseen by the Shaolin Temple. His classes are filled with disciples from his mountain village, who look to him as their hero and master. This school I have opened is for poor people who have talent and dreams. No matter where you come from, if you have the ambition, dreams and dedication, I will try my best to teach you and make you understand the soul of the Shaolin spirit. Canadian-born Joe Zapavinia travels to Xing Hong School every year for three months of training. I was very lucky enough to meet my master in, in Canada in 1998. Oh. Shaolin fighting monks came down to do a demonstration. Oh. I was blown away at the type of power he had and the agility. It was, uh, it was like something I've never seen in my life before. It impressed me so much that I, I, I thought that I really wanted to learn from him above anybody else. In return for the humbling experience of learning Kung Fu in the shadow of the Shaolin Temple, Good morning, class. Good morning, Joe teaches daily English classes. We went to review yesterday's class. Four arrow stands. Four arrow stands. Punch. 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 Little red fist. Little red fist. The training here is very tough. The first thing they teach you is that fear should not exist in your mind. You should not fear anything. Because if you fear, you will not be able to achieve anything. 
The monks that I found are very open, very, very down to earth. Except when it comes down to, uh, to training or to teaching, they're very strict and very hard on you. If you don't do a certain move right, they really push on you hard until you get it right. Everything is taught gradually, slowly. You keep doing drill, practicing drills over and over until you get familiar with that. When you're very familiar with that, it's much easier to learn an actual form. As far as my family back home, they think I'm crazy. My family thinks I am really, I really lost my mind. But they sort of, in a way, accept it because they know that it's my dream. In my heart, I know this is the only thing I want to do. So no matter how hard the lifestyle is here, it will not kill me. It's what I need. Dedication is rewarded with the rare opportunity to train in the temple with the tiger of Shaolin. To learn Chinese Kung Fu is a very difficult process. You need the right thoughts and attitude in a person. The true path to learning Shaolin Kung Fu is to realize within yourself a peaceful mind and peaceful thoughts. Because it is based on power of mind and soul. It is not based on your physical characteristics and muscles. That doesn't mean anything. It is based on the power of your spirit. This power is the highest outcome. He's almost somewhat of a perfectionist, if you will. You need perfect posture, perfect stance, uh, perfect body movement. If you're doing traditional forms, you need a certain amount of, uh, of what they call patching or explosive power which is all concentrated in the waist. Every move has to be very precise, otherwise you're gonna have to do it over and over until you until you get it right and in many cases that that could take a while <laughs> so if you don't have the the will to do it you're not going to do it you better not waste your time <laughs> I was a little uh, nervous at first because I, I didn't know how far he would go or how how tough he would be. I had an idea, but not quite uh, not quite to that point. And he was very uh, very tough. There's a turning point. When you learn up to 10 years of Shaolin Kung Fu, you begin to start focusing on Chan philosophy. Chan philosophy will let you deeply understand the history of Shaolin and the principles of Shaolin philosophy and the culture of it. The Shaolin philosophy is to find peace and self-actualization through the disciplines of war. Students displaying an affinity and deep passion for the philosophy are chosen as disciples, devoting their entire lives to the study of Shaolin Kung Fu. Well, Shaolin is sort of uh, me. 
I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a weird feeling. Uh, so there are some things that's hard to explain. Today I know that in, in mind and body, this is the one thing that uh, I want to pursue as a goal or a career. When they turn 18, Sing Hong students must decide, as he once did, whether to leave the temple and seek their fortunes in the secular world or take Buddhist vows and become monks. Now at the turn of the millennium, there are a handful of students who are choosing to do both in the name of the temple. They are spreading the spiritual essence of Chinese Kung Fu to the Western world. from home, 34th generation Shaolin monk Xiao Guolin teaches the intertwined messages of Shaolin Kung Fu and Buddhism in the heart of Queens, New York. I came to America in 1992 for a show. I noticed there were many Buddhist temples, but none of them were Shaolin. I feel that it was very necessary to have a Shaolin temple in America so people could have a chance to learn about it. In the predominantly Chinese neighborhood of Flushing, Guolin opened the first official overseas branch of the ancient Shaolin temple. The first movement is star movement. Inhale, exhale. In martial arts, there is a saying, breathing is an internal exercise. Using your body muscles is an external exercise. The external and the internal are always combined and never separated. Qi energy generates from your body and is controlled by breathing. The breath is very similar to wind, as they both require air. This movement of energy is what they call qi. To gain mastery of qi, there must be a commitment between master, or sifu, and student, one to learn, the other to teach. Very focused. Street. Mind. Buddhism is linked to thought and mind. Martial art is a type of exercise. Buddhism, having no form, can be expressed through martial arts. Buddhism, uh, I wasn't planning to become a monk. When I was introduced to Chan Buddhism and Kung Fu, I realized this was my calling. I knew I needed to become a monk to show my dedication and spread it throughout the world. While traditional forms of Chinese Kung Fu have found a home in New York, it was China that threatened the very foundation of the ancient art. During the Cultural Revolution, Mao's communist regime outlawed Buddhism and prohibited the practice of Kung Fu. Some ancient knowledge was irretrievably lost. Under the communist slogan, comrades should not fight comrades, the sport of modern wushu was introduced to fill the void. You need to be faster. Watch Liu Qinghua. At the Sher Cha Hai Sports School in downtown Beijing, Coach Wu Bin drills the finest Wushu athletes in all of China. You running too slow. You jumping too slow. This is not acceptable. Wushu consists of defending and attacking action that adds up to Tao Lu. In Tao Lu, we combine the traditional Wushu with some artistic movements. Tao Lu shows off its beauty and high level of difficulty. 
Competitive wushu reigns as China's most revered sport. Winning championships brings honor to a city. When Coach Wu took over the team in 1974, the country's capital was last in the national standings. I train students at a very young age because they are better prepared if they start training early. In less than four years, we were the number one team in the nation, and to this day we still are. But the initial stages were easy. The hard part was how to maintain the reputation. First, I look at their figure and appearance. Then I test their agility to new postures. They have to be quick learners. Third, I look at their physical conditioning, how flexible they are and how fast they are. Only the top 12 students will make it to the Beijing team. I started wushu at the age of nine, and now I am 26 years old. I have been practicing wushu for 17 years. Liu Jinghua is the number one female wushu athlete in the world. When I was young, I was curious about wushu. After I became more involved with wushu, I decided that it was going to be my lifetime profession. These are my medals from this year. Oh, missing one. Certificates. I live here during my training and during holiday, I will go home. I don't miss home because this place has a great system for training and I hang out with everybody here. I enjoy living here more than living at home. I'm married. I miss him, but I have my career. Therefore, I will focus on my career during this time. When I accomplish my career, we can stay together for a long time. It doesn't matter for now. For them to join the team, they have to be very hard workers because we are very strict. Once they are accepted on the team, if they don't work hard enough, we will ask them to leave. They have to keep improving. To be number one team, training is essential. But more important than the training is the factor of harmony and coordination within the team. We are like a family. The team leaders, coaches, and athletes all have good relationship. We all maintain our discipline. Coach Wu is like a father. My father died in 1994, and he took care of every aspect of my life. I know him very well in what he is thinking. He has taken care of me the most. He wants me to be the best. More than a decade ago, another young star was rapidly rising through the ranks. Donnie Yen was raised on Wu Shu. His mother, Bo Sim Mark, is credited with introducing the sport of modern Wu Shu to the West when she brought her family to the U.S. from China in 1973. Mother and son training began for Donnie at the tender age of four. It's very dramatic. I mean, I think. The mom and son relationship is very, it's sort of very movie-like, you know, how the mom teaches the son. When I was little, she was quite hard on me. By the time he was 14, Donnie Yen was traveling from his home in Boston to China to train with the Beijing team. The type of traditional martial art training, I mean, that gave me a very strong foundation and then kind of molded me into what I am today. Okay. Are uh, you ready? Chinese Kung Fu 
once kept a closely guarded secret within the confines of the Shaolin Temple, has been transformed forever by film. Do it again, 23 frames. Do it again, 23. On location in Berlin, Chinese action director and star Donnie Yen yeah, I know. is directing Puma, a German series infused with Chinese martial arts. Okay, Mickey, run around the corner. Yeah, can help. Movie fight choreography is like a dance. Look, come over here, wait, this fight. Donnie must carefully plot each move to provide the camera with the best view of the action. Stand over there, make sure that he doesn't roll forward. Here we go. Roll sound. Roll camera. Speed. And action. Donnie Yen's style on screen fighting is passion. Check. 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 I have to start okay. from the emotion behind the characters. For me, that's the most interesting. Movements are just movements. A punch is a punch. For me, a punch is a punch. What is the passion behind? What is the motive behind? That's the most important. Ready? Action. Everything under the sun is about expression and tempo. It's not about, oh, look at that kick. It's not about that kick. It's how he does that kick. certain amount of power and these are well-trained martial artists and stuff so if they miss you know, I mean anything could happen he could easily miss a punch or the other person miss duck in a punch or kick and he, he could get hurt he's doubling for the villain he's a star I'm doubling myself he's doubling himself sometimes okay I go on. he's gonna jump on top of the table and make you hard starts to step forward he's gonna throw a combination of series of kicks yeah. Slowly, sorry, I'm coming up. And cross kick. Let's see. Yeah. 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 So as you can see, this is just a rehearsal. Now the rehearsal is going to speed. Imagine a real take, a real take. These guys be firing each other and talk about the dangerousness. If one of these guys missed, feeble, feeble ambulance. <laughs> the art of creating a convincing fight scene often requires prop and camera tricks. Time in rehearsal. I want to see the camera panning. Okay. Always have multiple cameras uh, setups to capture uh, different angles, variation of angles and uh, speed. Roll cameras. Three, two, one, go! Cut. Almost it. Check the gates. Too easy. Perfect. 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 100. In the moments between filming, Donnie and his stunt team designed the next fight scene. So maybe you could add a little... So what is it? What do you want to do? Yeah, Mickey just kicked the legs, right? Yeah. Uh, bad guy comes down. Comes down and bad and then, guy try to, try to grab techniques? him. What kind of techniques? He's got diving at him. What is it? Diving. Just grab his foot, feet? Use a leg. 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 So he goes hands first. He turns, he goes legs. I show me. Movie is a collaboration, and you can't make a movie alone. My teams have been working with me for 
quite a number of years. Yeah. Go inside. Scoop him up. Punch, punch, punch. No, no, no. I don't want punch, punch, punch. You want to punch those? I want... Yeah. Character. Give me some character. We have a very strong mutual understanding of what we're trying to accomplish on a daily shooting basis. And go scoop. Scoop the face. Give it. These men are well-trained, well-experienced filmmakers. Go forward. Come on. Close up. Mickey, high speed. The restaurant scene takes three days to shoot for 45 seconds of on-screen time. Show history so I think we all have one objective is to get the job done and doing the best we can a staged kung fu kick is designed to look devastating but in actual combat a kick to the stomach delivers hundreds of pounds of pure force Back at the Shaolin village in southern China, advanced students train in Sam Shao, the ancient fighting art form of Kung Fu. <laughs> Ever since the establishment of contemporary Wushu, Critics have argued that it is a martial arts sport without a soul. At their core, all Chinese martial arts are about combat, which is deeply grounded as a spiritual discipline. In the 1960s, the Chinese government re-established the ancient Shaolin kickboxing and grappling form called San Shao and began promoting full contact tournaments with body armor. Literally translated as unbound hand, San Xiao refers to the free form kicks, punches, sweeps, and throws used to defeat the opponent. The new rules of modern San Xiao, much like Wushu before it, were superficial changes in regards to the overall integrity of Shaolin Kung Fu. Therein lies the soul of Shaolin. The nature of Chan Buddhism permits Shaolin Kung Fu to constantly evolve to meet the needs of the times. Silicon Valley, California. 28-year-old Kung Lee is training to defend his World San Chao Championship. My professional record now is 10 wins, 0 losses with 7 knockouts. I like it. <laughs> How I became involved in San Chao is when I was doing traditional Kung Fu, I felt like it, it wasn't complete and if I was going to be in a real-life situation, how am I going to really use my skills? <laughs> San show to me is complete because it incorporates the hand techniques of any style, the kick techniques of any style, the wrestling techniques of any style. In the weeks leading up to the big fight, Kung's days fall into a training routine. Accept the pain. You don't deny the pain. Hell yeah, you hurt. Hell yeah, you want to stop. But you're not going to. All right? That's a picture of the position where you're right now. The champion. You accept the pain. Accept it. That's the game that you're in. Turn around. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Come on. That's right. Come on. Pick me up, baby. Pick me up. Carry me, though. Carry me. Come on. Pick it up. That's right. Whenever you want to be great at something, there's no secret. It's hard work. There's no shortcuts either. So if you want to be a great fighter, you got to dedicate yourself and you got to know what you want. You got to go out there and get it. Las Vegas, Nevada. 
fight capital of the world. See, nice and tight, loose, loose. Right now, you just want to go through his basic techniques to get your body warmed up. And the main thing is that he's focusing right now. Every drill he did right now, he's imagining, he's picturing his opponent, what he's doing. All I want to do it right now just get a mental image of what he's going to do tomorrow night. The scissor kick or the scissor heel hook is my bread and butter. It's the move that made me famous. So basically, I fake like I'm going to throw a side kick and I deliberately miss. Then I whip my whole body to turn and scissor him down. I'll go slow. The night before the fight is a flurry of prerequisite procedures. 177? 177 pounds. And the chance for Kung to get a glimpse of tomorrow's opponent, Mohamed Keita. Tonight's fight will be more of a revenge fight for my opponent. In 98, he was one of the favorites to win the Shidokan. It was a tough fight. Uh, but I tapped him out in the fifth round. He'll probably be gunning for me. He's, he's confident, but, you know, everyone's confident and everyone comes in ready until they get hit. Five rounds, three minutes. He looked taller for some reason. You know, maybe it's the shoes that he was wearing, you know. I know he, he's like a 6'1 or something. I remember fighting him in Shidakana. He was that tall, but, not, you know, Maybe he grew a little, but you know, you can't judge a, a fighter by the way they look. You just gotta go in there and fight their style. So, if he's tall, just chop him down. The night of the fight. Fighters arrive at the Bellagio Ballroom three hours before the first bell. This event tonight is basically for the K1 heavyweights. K1 is more like modified Muay Thai. They brought my fight on as a total different style. Scheduled as the second to last fight, yeah. Kong has an additional three hours to wait. Everyone gets nervous. Whoever says they don't get nervous, they're crazy. Um, I'm, I get butterflies here and there, but of course, the closer you get, the more nervous you get. In an adjoining dressing room, Kung's opponent, Mohammed Keita. You got to be prepared to endure anything. If he comes at you um, with everything he's got, you better be ready to absorb and move and uh, you know cover. Being a professional is more risky than an amateur, because amateur, you got headgear, you got shin pads. Uh, sometimes you have chest gear. In a professional fight, no headgear, uh, just mouthpiece and cup and bare shin, and you know, it's rock and roll time. The hand wraps go on, then the blow fly starts coming. Yeah, it's <laughs> just a little protection on the wrist. I think my punch is getting stronger. <laughs> Everyone has a little bit of fear in before they step in the ring, but I just deal with it because I can't avoid it. I can't block it out. I love that noise. But once I step in the ring and the referee says, are you, are you ready? Are you ready? And you're like, uh-oh, here it goes. Go. First contact, all goes out the door and you're, boom, you're ready. No fear, no nothing. That's right. Everything we work for comes down right now. Nothing else you did before matters. Stand there. That's right. You ain't finding your record, you ain't finding your past. It's right now. It's right now. All right? You're the best in the world. Right? Yeah. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. not be denied tonight. this time. 
and Mohamed Lamine Keita. There's so much things that go through your mind when I'm waiting for them to announce my name. It just runs through like, what could happen? What will happen? The techniques, am I warmed up enough? Did I get a sweat going? Now coming to the ring, Kong Ali. To a, a fight, uh, I blank everything out because I don't want to be thinking of anything because then my reaction time might be slower. So when I go out there, everything's blanked out. I pray to God every time he goes in there that he's safe. Please, God, make this make this work out. Make him be okay. He's he's worked so hard for this, and there couldn't be a better champion than him. Let's not do our minds. Okay. Let's obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you. Come out the bell. I got a kick. Um, at this level, all techniques should come naturally. I like to control the tempo. If he comes at you with everything he's got, you better be ready to absorb. And if he comes out pacing, then you make him fight your fight. And if he comes out stalling, just trying to survive, then you put the heat to him, and you basically become the predator, and you stalk him. And you just break him down and put him in that corner and finish him. I never say anything to him because I don't want to make him nervous. I truly just let things happen the way they happen, and just be there to support him where, where he needs me, his wife to be. I didn't expect to become a fighter, but now that I look at the whole picture, you know, I'm built like a fighter, uh, I train like a fighter, and I definitely have that fighter mentality. Gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. The winner and still champion, Kong Lee. Over the years, it's become part of me. You know, you want to be a champion? You got to deal with all the obstacles that's out there like a champion. Fear, pain, victories, defeats. You know, bad luck, lucky punches, you gotta deal with it all. The extraordinary challenge to the body and the mind that awaits a modern day Kung Fu champion is steeped in tradition more than a millennium old. At its heart lies an ancient temple where the world's first Kung Fu masters were born. The practice of Kung Fu is in your thoughts and mind. It is not based on one punch or one kick. It is based on the unity between internal and external. 
by directing your thoughts and spirits within. You can use your mind to control your body. Now you can get the program you just saw on home video. Own it today. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, you can experience all the emotions. Journey through life's twists and turns. From great tragedy to the unexpected joy. And share in all the toughest challenges. Have this hour-long program delivered to your door. Call now.